Hi, this is Kathy Quinn with Floriani. Floriani is a division of R&K Distributing, and I want to welcome you to this week's Project of the Week. Now, I have been traveling quite a bit these last few weeks, and I've had lots of great questions, and a lot of times that's where I get some of my best stuff for my videos is because it's your questions. Well, I had several questions that I was asked repeatedly, so now I want to answer those because they're very good questions and they're, they're quick answers. The first question I had with the new upgrade that's just come out for the Dream and the Destiny, there is a new hoop. So that hoop will not be in your list of hoops for your brother or baby lock machine. So how would I create a custom hoop? We're going to come down to the left hand toolbar and you're going to see a picture of a hoop with a little drop down. So I'm going to left mouse click on that down arrow and I'm going to select a hoop. Now let's just look at this for a moment before we create our new hoop. I have selected PEZ because right now that's the format we're dealing with for the new hoop we want to create. And it's you can always pick which format for the machine you're using and then it will just list that machine's hoops. Rather than make you go through an extensive list of hoops for all machines, you can just pick your format and it'll only show those. Now if I drop this little arrow down, you're going to see all the hoops that are available for the Brother Baby Lock machines. Now if I click, uh, put a check mark in the word multi needle, it will kind of weed out on the Brother Baby Locks, it will weed out all the hoops that don't pertain to your multi-needle. So it kind of helps you uh, bring the list where it's manageable for what you're looking for. Now I'm going to deselect multi-needle and I am going to go to the word new. We are going to create a custom hoop. Now the new hoop, I'm going to give it a name and I'm going to name it the 240 by 240 upgrade hoop. Now it is a rectangular hoop because they're either rectangular or round. Those are your only options. Now it's asking me what the sewing field is. Now this is something I really appreciate about Brother Baby Lock is they give you the size of the sewing field not the size of the hoop because a hoop can be in this instance nine and a half but your sewing field is a little smaller than that because your the way your foot has to go around. So we're going to say 240 by 240. Okay. Now it's created this custom hoop. Now we've got here that we can rotate the hoop. Now in this case it's not going to matter. But that's great for a multi-needle because the on our flatbeds, if you have a 14 inch long hoop, that is the height of the hoop. But the minute you put that on a multi-needle, that is the width because a multi-needle hoop is rotated. So you do have that rotate option. So I'm now going to say OK. And there is my custom hoop. This is my 9.5 by 9.5 brand new hoop that goes with the upgrade. And now I've already told it what the sewing field is. So if I go beyond that, it will let me know that this is not going to fit in my hoop. So this is a great um, feature. Now we could bring in a design, just anything. Let's just grab a design real quick. Let's go to our free monthly designs because I always like to pick from there. Let's go to our free monthly and let's just pick, um, what are we in? We're in August. August 2016 and let's look at what we've got in our designs. Okay, we've got our these little appliques. So we're going to drag this applique in. And now I can go ahead and say fit to hoop and make it as large as possible within that hoop knowing it has fit exactly within that sewing field. So this is how we create a custom hoop. Now the next major question I got was how do I export artwork for my cutter. If I want to create a cutting file, how would I do that? Well, let's just bring in a file and we'll turn it into an applique so it's actually stitches. Let's bring in this uh, butterfly. That's fine. Okay, so we've got this butterfly. We would go ahead and decide what size we wanted on this butterfly. He's good like he is. 
and then I'm going to turn this butterfly artwork, I'm going to turn it into an applique because a lot of times what we want to do is we want to take an applique and have our digital cutter cut all our fabric for us. So we need to have an applique. Now know that when you work with a digital cutter, you must work with artwork. You are not working with designs. It has to be converted to artwork for your cutter to cut it. So I'm going to say file export artwork. Now this is a stitch file, but our software, if you're telling it you want to export it as artwork, it understands that you want to create an artwork file for a digital cutter. So I'm going to name this butterfly, if I can spell butterfly. So I can save it to an SVG for your Cameo, Silhouette, Sizzix, or I could make it an FCM for the Brother Scan and Cut. So you can pick what you need. Let's go with SVG for this. I'm going to save it to my desktop. So I've saved that artwork file, that digital file that I can now put on a jump drive and put in my cutter and have my cutter cut my designs out. Now I'm going to go ahead and get a new piece of paper and open so you can see that. So I'm going to go to my butterfly onto my desktop. Well, I could have sworn I put it on my desktop. Double check here, I've got desktop selected. Oh, I'm sorry. I went to open. See, I did exactly what I told you not to do. You've got to go to File, Import Artwork. You open a design, you import artwork. So we're going to import artwork. There is my butterfly. Now notice when this comes in, it is not, doesn't have stitches. It's just going to cut where that placement line was. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Applique Wonder, iron it onto the back of my fabric that I wish to cut out, and send it, put it on a jump drive, plug it into my cutter, and it will cut my applique fabric. So you can send cutting files by exporting artwork, you can look at them by importing artwork. So this is how we get a, a applique file to turn into a cut file. We just export it as artwork. Now I also could come in here, let's go back to this design. I could also select this design and I could come down here to my one click wonder, my star, and I could click on that and turn that into artwork and then I could export that. But our program is really smart. It knows that you don't want to convert your appliques and then have to turn them back into stitches. So when you just export as artwork, it will create a new artwork file. You can put it on your desktop, a jump drive, wherever you want to store it, and then cut your file and then you would have your applique file that you had created or from an applique design you had purchased. So now you know how you can cut out. Now, of course, I don't waste anything. Now, of course, I could just iron a little piece of applique wonder the size of this butterfly and put it on my mat, put this on my mat and cut it. Or I could cut a whole sheet of butterflies. Now, in that case, I would come in here and say, I want to repeat. Now, I know I can get two across, and I can probably get, uh, I'm going to push it and say four down. And I'm going to apply that. Now I'm going to give myself just a hair in between my horizontal distance because they're touching just, there we go, that's enough. Now I'm going to say OK. Now I'm going to say File, Export Artwork, and I would call this Multiple Butterflies, and Save. So now I could go there and file, import artwork. Oops. I didn't get import artwork, excuse me. File, import artwork, and I could go to multiple butterflies. And there we go. Now I could cut out eight butterflies at one time. So it's very easy to, to work with, 
Very simple as long as you remember you're dealing with artwork, not a design. Now the next major question I had is, how do I update my software? Well, the first thing you do is you go to help and you tell it to check for updates. And normally what we would do is before I do that, I'd go help about. I want to know what the number is of my update of my that I'm running right now. Then I would come in here and I would say help check for updates. So now I know the version number I have and I can see what's available right now is version 3020. So I would go ahead and I would click to download this version and I would save that file. Now this would start downloading and I started this before I started and you can see right here it is. So here I've got it. I, I was doing it before so that we wouldn't have to wait two or three minutes because my internet is slow around here. So what I would do now is I can double left mouse click on this. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the canceled one. Double left mouse click and I can say run. And when I say run, and I'm going to cancel this because I have a later version than's on here. So that's all you're going to do. You can also come in here, and I do this a lot. I'm going to make my, let me um, minimize the screen a little bit. There we go. And let me go ahead and minimize my software. I could actually come in here and I could go to my downloads and I can drag this out onto my desktop. And I want to show you what it looks like. We're going to close these tabs. This is what it looks like. So then you can either double mouse, left mouse click on that. And again, once I do that, it's going to bring up the ability to update my software. Perhaps, there it is. And I, again, I would click the word run. Now you can also put this, let's say you have the program on two computers, or you have one computer that's not connected to the internet. You can put this on a jump drive, plug it into your other computer, double left mouse click on it, and just follow the directions. You'll say run, it'll come up, say do you want to install, yes, and it'll walk you through until you go to finish. So it's very easy to update your software on a manual update. So that's tonight's questions that I had because um, I try not to make the videos too long. So next week I've got a few more questions that we will go ahead and answer. We'll look at the You Design It feature and I look forward to talking to you next week. Have a good night. Bye-bye.